Our mission is to educate and enlighten uh, the general population on gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender issues. Um, specifically for the gay community, uh, sometimes it's a reminder about uh, our history. Um, sometimes it's uh, a hope for the future for our community. Um, but more, more times than not, it's educational and enlightening for the whole community. One of the points made in the play is that uh, even in our own community, we're very diverse people. We have gay men, we have lesbians, transgender, bisexual. Um, the, one of the main characters talks about all of the various uh, alphabet soup, as uh, some people in our community call it, GLBTQ, IA, you know, all of those things. We've even added an extra Q, I think, now. And, you know, the point she tries to make is, if, if it did rub off, how would we know what was rubbing off on someone, you know? And I often joke about uh, the gay agenda. Um, you know, I, I think uh, it's funny when people refer to the gay agenda because I think, you know, the, the gay people I know, if you put 10 of them in a room, they'd never agree on an agenda. <laughs> this play is not published yet. Um, and I, I don't know if it's uh, Sandy's desire to even have it published. One of uh, my board member's partner actually uh, handed me this play and a stack of other plays for consideration. This play uh, deals primarily with lesbian relationships, and uh, lesbian relationship plays are harder to find than gay relationship plays, gay men relationship plays. And so I think I was probably bemoaning that fact one night at dinner at her house, and she handed me a stack of lesbian plays. And uh, this was one of them that uh, sort of struck me as a really good sort of relationship play. I told the actress when we first started rehearsing this play that to me, it felt like um, Ozzie and Harriet for the 21st century. Um, you know, thinking about Ozzie and Harry and perhaps their friends coming over for dinner or relationships that have, have gone awry. Um, and so that's sort of conceptually where we started. She's an actress, uh, has done a lot of work, I think, at uh, the Sacramento Theater where this uh, play premiered. And she wrote it in response to Prop 8. I think uh, she... Uh, writes relationships really well. Um, I enjoy, and the actors have enjoyed, the interplay between the, the characters, the relationships. Um, and, and, you know, for a first time playwright, I think she's written some really uh, comical, witty things in this play to promote a viewpoint about Prop 8, which really kind of takes a, a back seat to the relationships. You know, it's really important to me for Pandora to present gay people in a normal setting. Because really, if there is an agenda, the agenda is that we just want what everybody else has. And um, so I'm hopeful that by presenting plays like this that you know, we're able to sort of say, oh look, they're just like everybody else, Mom. <laughs> uh, we have two shows left in the season. This, this spring part of our season has been pretty compacted because of scheduling. Because we sublet venues, we don't have our own venue. We're, we're sort of at the mercy of when things are available. Uh, our next production coming up will be in the Bingham Theater at Actors Theater of Louisville. Uh, and that uh, musical comedy is called Xana Don't. A very funny musical that presumes the world is gay. It is a clever, clever, fun musical. And I can't wait for audiences to see it. And then we'll close our season with uh, The New Century by Paul Rudnick, who wrote uh, Jeffrey and the Most Fabulous Story Ever Told. Uh, and that will be at the Thrust Theater at UofL. We'll announce our 2011-2012 season um, at the premiere of Xana Don't. And we're very excited about that, too. We have quite a diverse season coming up next season.